I'm Brenda Parker, the Haven Nurse. I'm Caroline Litster, and I'm the Children, Young Person and Family Coordinator. I'm Louise Gardner, the Service Manager. The Haven's here for you. We're here for individuals and families who are impacted by life-limiting illness. We know that each individual will have a unique experience journeying through these times, but one thing we're confident of is that it's better when we're facing the future together. And facing the future is exactly what we've been doing this year with the development of our digital support services. Over the last year, as well as supporting all of our existing clients, we've also provided services to 132 new clients. All clients now receive their support digitally by telephone calls, video calls and emails. We developed our digital services immediately in response to the impact of COVID and the temporary closure of all three of our Haven centres in line with government advice. It was essential for us that Haven support continued for our vulnerable clients. The development of our digital services over the last year has been really exciting for us. Those that have been diagnosed with an illness, those caring for someone in a family who has an illness, those who are sadly bereaved, have all been able to receive continuing support via our digital support activity sessions with no breaks in our services at all. We've also worked really hard to develop our services for dementia clients, their carers and their families this year. We're really proud of what we've achieved. It's really important for us when we're developing and delivering any of our Haven specialist services to do this with our clients and alongside the communities that we're part of. Here's Brenda and Caroline to tell you more about the Haven Digital Services and the difference they're making. As a Haven nurse, the first thing I do is have a telephone or video call with each person, the person with dementia, their carer or family member, we call this our WIN model and it stands for What's Important Now. I work with the client to identify their strengths and resources, ones that they already have, and we build a programme of support together from there. One that is going to help them self-manage their situation, help them meet their outcomes and make a difference. A programme of digital support might include emotional and practical video and telephone support sessions with me, support activities like signposting to other organisations, Morphit Digital Gentle Exercise Session, Relaxation Sessions, Seasonal Craft Sessions and also Self-Management Toolkits. Each practical toolkit is different tailored to each individual and family. Some contain self-management activities, others creative arts and crafts or a mixture of both. The toolkits help people to move toward their desired outcomes and goals and are used alongside the nurse support and activity sessions. Some clients are looking for help to do things that help them manage their situation better and that when in the house gives them something to work on out with the Haven digital sessions. Some want us to be able to improve their coping skills and resilience and to have a break from their thoughts and situation. Some people find it reassuring to talk to a nurse, ask questions and be supported emotionally. For carers, the digital support sessions can give them a break, which is really important to them too. They can have time to, to themselves when their loved ones are having their digital session. Sometimes it's, it's helping a carer move through their grief and bereavement. Over the last year, the digital support sessions have to help reduce isolation and feeling of loneliness and have kept families connected to support services. Accessing the video and telephone calls and other activities also help with this. Um, I've been working with a family who moved over to digital support last year. Here they are now to tell you how Haven Digital Support has continued to help them. So thanks so much for coming to um, spend some time today to chat with me. Um, I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about, um, about you and about um, why you thought the Haven was able to help you. It was actually the CPN nurse that referred us to the Haven. And before COVID, we attended Haven in Forth. Um, we had support sessions with Brenda. We came to the Lifting Your Spirits group relaxation group. Um, and they really helped us both to be able to cope and manage. 
um, we didn't really know much about the haven. We thought it was more to do with people with cancer. Didn't realise the, the vast range that, of things that they do do. Well, that's super. That's super. So, so you, you, you made contact with the Haven. You came over to our um, centre in Forth then when it was open and you joined in with um, some of the sessions there um, and realised, yeah, absolutely. Dementia is one of the life limiting illnesses that um, we do we do work with. So, so tell mm-hmm. us then. So you moved over to the, the digital sessions then um, when COVID um, kind of started. Um, what, tell us about the digital sessions and the activities that you did with Brenda. Well, we were we really worried at the start of the pandemic because we were shielding and we saw nobody other than a five minute visit from family when they dropped things off. And I don't know what we'd have done without Brenda. <sighs> Sorry, I really don't. She was an absolute lifeline to us because she gave time not only to talk to me, but she also would talk to Tony and Tony was able to talk to her and had confidence in talking to her that whatever he said he spoke to Brenda about it and whatever I said to Brenda I spoke to Brenda about it so it was in some ways a pressure valve for both of us she's been an absolute lifeline she could always make him smile Uh and have a chat with him about anything from trains and our cat to whatever (laughs) <laughs> and oh, you know when she was talking to him I could I could have a sit I could sit and have a coffee in peace and quiet and just relax a bit yeah. so really important for you both I'm here oh absolutely you both. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not yeah. at all not at all take your time with it um yeah so so the digital sessions really did help you did help oh you. absolutely not all, yes I don't know where we would have been without it I don't I really don't and what kind of things did you do then? What digital sessions did you take part in where you were able to get that support? Well, she would she would burn us and we would have a video call and we could sit and chat and she was never rushed. She chatted to us or we chatted to her for however long it took. Never felt as though she was trying to rush us off. Um, and then she also organised um, the Crafty Hen where we were with another group of people doing um ceramics christmas baubles and things fantastic and, and tony sat and joined in that one really well and and in fact actually sat afterwards mm-hmm. for oh, a good hour afterwards still painting and things it was, was really good super and what difference did that make to you to be able to go to one of the crafty hen sessions it lifted us both it really did it was it was it was great to see other people and you could talk to other people and I mean, we didn't talk about dementia. We just talked about whatever, what we were doing. It was coming up to Christmas, the pandemic, how that had affected us all. And it was just really nice to talk to other people and see other people. And also Brenda sent us some um, egg cups for the grandchildren to do. Fantastic. So my son and I sat with the grandchildren and, and did them here. And Tony came through to see what we were doing. And mm-hmm stayed for a bit and, and dipped in and out of what we were doing and then the cost of children were busy showing him what he'd done yeah so that that was really nice because it can be a bit separate sometimes when the children come because he can find them noisy yeah you know so sometimes he'll just disappear into the bedroom out of the way if, if they're getting noisy and they're on his, getting on his nerves which that's fine um but that was good that he was there with them and, and you know seeing what they were doing and telling them how to mix colors because <laughs> I could remember things like that. I could remember that blue and yellow make green, you know, and yeah, and things yeah. like that. So it was good. Yeah, really good. The activities mm-hmm. brought the whole family together and you yes. could have those conversations yeah. and all join in. Definitely. Is there anything else that's important for you to see around the support that, that you've had at the Haven? Just that I would really like to see it keep going and I'd love to see it open back up. We, we were just getting comfortable going to the haven because at first it was very strange um and you don't know what to expect or what people are like and all the rest of it when you go somewhere different and certainly for Tony it's you know it can be very hard to get him to go anywhere um but he felt really comfortable there and you know while I was having the relaxation class he was having somebody to chat to 
and and he was sitting blethered away about trains and where we've lived and you know he was an aircraft engineer so we've lived all over the place and that was really good for him you know and it's this kind of simulation the need that he hasn't had this last year children and young people may need some support in helping to make sense of what's happening following a loved one's diagnosis of dementia. We help them to express their feelings and understand their emotions in a safe, non-judgmental environment that also provides them with encouragement and reassurance. Our current support services for children and young people include one-to-one -one digital support sessions, digital activity-based support sessions, signposting to online resources, and bespoke toolkits which are created depending on the needs of the individual. These can include therapeutic storybooks specific to dementia, activity workbooks to help process some difficult feelings, emotions journals, and some therapeutic arts and crafts activities. Now back to Louise to tell you some more about our latest developments. We've not been able to implement the new digital services for dementia and wider families on our own. As well as working with our clients to do this, we've also been working closely with other organisations to make this happen too. Partnership working has always been at the heart of the Haven. This year it became even more important to us throughout the pandemic when new services were being developed, others changed, paused or stopped and as staff moved around. We still wanted to know how to connect our dementia and wider clients quickly to wider community services that might also help them. So we set up a series of digital share and learn sessions so that we could learn about how other organisations were working, the services that they were now delivering and how we could quickly signpost our clients to them. We shared our information on the Haven digital services and developments at these sessions too. How could we complement other services for people living with dementia as a step up, step down and sideways signpost partner and as a way to bridge service provision and promote continuity of support across community services. We did this digitally with the Lanarkshire community psychiatric teams, the carer centres and we trialled the approach with some Lanarkshire care homes too. We continue to maintain really strong signposting relationships. We were also delighted to work with Kerry Connections this year, a dementia community hub in Angus in this way too. As a partnership approach and with the support of LEADER funding to deliver a dementia connected and supportive community project. This was a project aimed at connecting communities to specialist haven support and wider dementia services across rural Lanarkshire and Kerry Muir in Angus. A total of 299 people participated in the project including local businesses, our health and social care partners, dementia cafes, Alzheimer's Scotland, dementia groups, and support in local churches like St Andrews in Cowlick. The pandemic struck partway through the delivery of the project, so it too had to transition to a, to a digital approach very quickly. The learning for us in this project was how digital support can remove geographic boundaries. Never did we imagine being able to deliver Haven services so easily to Kerry Connections members in their own homes. This too was the same for our dementia families in rural Lanarkshire, where travelling distance, time and cost may have been a barrier to accessing services. They too could continue to receive their support in the comfort of their own homes which for us is where our work with dementia families started over five years ago with Life Changes Trust and South Lanarkshire Health and Social Care Partnership as anchor funders to pilot an at-home service for people affected by dementia in South Lanarkshire. So to do this, we need to keep moving forward together. If you think The Haven can help you or someone you know, a loved one, a family member, a friend, anyone in your community, if you're a health, education or community professional and you'd like to share and learn with us, then please do get in touch. Thank you.